Okay, we're in the new home, which means we need to set up our new food storage room. Yes, I have a food storage room. It's basically my extended pantry. It took me a whole day to set this room up. As I take you along setting up this room, I'm gonna be throwing in a ton of tips for you. You could do this with any space that you have. Aprons on, let's go. The pantry that I have in this house, which you'll see real soon, it is a smaller pantry, so I'm definitely using this as my extended pantry. Not everything that I had in the last house is going to fit into my new pantry. Yes, this room is being used as my extended pantry, but it's also a storage room. I have an area for all my bulk kitchen items. The closet is holding crafts and all our paper goods. Probably will end up housing some games. One wall I do have two freezers on. I'm bringing more shelves in here to house more of our things. But on this wall is where I am setting up all our canned goods, the bulk of our short-term pantry. I do have some built-in shelves behind these shelves. It was very convenient when we found this room, but we knew that those shelves weren't going to be something very accessible because we knew that we were gonna put these shelves here. But we have a lot of freeze-dried and dehydrated food that we get from different companies like and Farms and Thrive. So we decided to put those cans on these shelves behind this. We could still see them, we could still utilize them. I have them all inventoried so I know what we have. So if I need to use the freeze dried or dehydrated now, um, I could just go and reach in. So I tried to set this up like my last food storage room because it's so like muscle memory, I know where to go. But I did change up a little bit. I decided that on the end, we were gonna start with all our canned beans and go down to like the Mexican things and then work our way over to kind of where I had it at the other house. When you're setting things up, you wanna group things obviously in like categories. I don't have this for the sake of just having it or, I, and I'm definitely not a food hoarder, okay? Call me what you want, but that's not true. What I do is I keep an eye out on our go-to items for our go-to meals. And when I see a sale, I stock up. So let's say you have your favorite meal that you have at least maybe two or three times a month. The items that are shelf stable that you have for it, multiply that three times, okay? And then you can have that on your shelf so you have enough that you're not constantly running out to the store because when we go to the store, we end up spending more money. So if you're thinking, I really wanna start something like this but I'm really limited on space, how can I still do this? Here's some tips for you. So back in November when I was visiting my parents, I really got to see how they set up their house. They let me film it for you because it's going to have you see where you can really utilize space in your home to extend your pantry. They have a pantry and it's nice and wide and gives them lots of space for that every day in and out but there is a coat closet there by the kitchen that they don't use as a coat closet. And so my dad built in some shelves and that is their extended pantry. That's part of their food room. I really liked seeing how he set that up. How's your closet situation in your home? Think and look at your closet space of, can I maybe add another shelf up? Can I use more of that space? What about the back of your closets? What are some closets that maybe you're not really utilizing? So my parents have a closet in their guest room that they're really not utilizing so they use that for a lot of their long-term food storage so they put them in totes and have them stacked in there do you have furniture that you can open up like a bench that you're not utilizing that you can put food storage in there my parents have this hutch that's in their entryway and they use that as an extra pantry like their little food storage room so my parents have like little pantries and they have a hutch by the dining room table where there's a few cupboards that they don't really utilize so they use that as well for some backup storage under your beds you can get a tote that's designed to go under your bed these actually have wheels on them so it makes it super easy to pull in and out from you can raise your bed up kind of like the days when I was in college, we raised our beds up on these cinder blocks and that way we had more storage space. If you have an adjustable bed like I do, you can fit some totes down there or your number 10 cans of long-term food storage. You could store food by using a shoe organizer. Over the door shoe organizers are perfect for storing bags of dry soup mix, beans, seasonings. You could place the shoe organizer on the inside of a closet door or any other door in your home. If you have a crawl space you can put boxes or bins of food in there. I would do more of your long-term that are freeze-dried or dehydrated food. 
uh, and put under there. Um, we have a crawl space here in our new home and that's where we're going to put all our buckets. We have lots of buckets of grain, milk, beans, rice, oatmeal. All of those are going underneath in that crawl space. Under your stairs, so these are all boxes of number 10 cans of sugar, honey powder, rolled oats, bell peppers, butter powder, and beef bouillon, chicken bouillon, chocolate milk powder, dry milk. This is freeze dried beef and freeze dried chicken. Do you have a room you're really not utilizing? or a space in a room that you could put a few shelves up to start building your food storage. I did get a comment from a viewer. She said, hey, we have a formal dining room. We never used it. I turned that into a food storage room. So with having enough space, think about this, especially if you're starting out. How much food do you buy in a week and how much space is that going to take? Then multiply that by the number of weeks you wanna have food on hand. Depending, your food could fill up a whole closet. So I like saying, store what you eat and eat what you store. To have any type of extended pantry, you need to rotate. You need a rotating system. My biggest tip for you, are you ready? Write this down, put it in your phone, write it on your mirror, is first in, first out. You could date the cans, you can date the sections. Sometimes I'll write on the cardboard boxes that I have them in, but what I do is I, I look at the date of, on the cans, make sure that the closest date is up front, the further date in the back. These mushrooms I got at a different store than the other ones, and they have a different date of the year 2025. These are sweet potatoes, yams. I'm just gonna make sure I watch the date. I got these on a Thanksgiving sale, 23. This goes up here. And you guys, just because it says 22 or 23, you have a few years on these cans. All right, so the rest say 24. So the 23 one is up front. And then I have olives. These are 26. I checked out my dad's extended pantry and he writes on every can. I think it's just easier and not straining on the eyes, but it's not a bad idea, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'll write on the box, but yeah, I've got too much going on here. Rotating your pantry gives you the chance to do regular inventories as well. It's very easy to forget what you have on hand and what you haven't looked at in a month or longer. Keep an inventory either on your phone or in your planner or a notebook of all the items that you have on your shelf. This is the number one thing for meal planning, okay? I teach how to shop your shelves and you're gonna shop here where you're buying things on sale. I have lots of videos on that. I'll leave it down below for you. But it also helps you to not overbuy. You see what you already have. And if you're not going through things fast enough, you don't have to pick up that same go-to item again. You can wait a little bit. I recently posted a video on how to organize your freezers. And in there, I talked about labeling. You can either label the shelves or the bins. You could do that same concept here. I could put labels on everything, but this is pretty self-explanatory here. Everything's out. I can see it. But if you're building a system like this and you're using bins and you're tucking those bins away, you can label. Make sure you label what you have in there and take inventory. So when you go to shop your shelves or shop your bins, you could find what you're looking for. During the process, if you're noticing like, oh, I didn't realize I had this item. I really need to use it put it in your normal pantry so you can get it into your meal rotation. Right now I'm working on the fruits. Lots of pineapple. And this one is like random fruits, so like cranberry sauce. I'm gonna move that up there. That way I'm utilizing more shelf space. I'm going to put pumpkin here, even though it's not a fruit, but it's right under veggie. These need to get used first. All right, I've got mandarin oranges. So I'm gonna do some moving around. I think what I'll do is move pumpkin up here. So for this shelf, it'll be the canned proteins, like canned chicken, canned beef, canned pork. I have canned turkey, canned ham, spam, and then I have tuna fish and clams and shrimp that I'm gonna try to work just on this shelf. Uh -huh. 
Here is where not to store your food. The garage. Temperature fluctuates way too much, especially in the summer seasons. This is also a bad location unless you keep it closed and the temperature is consistent, which is very not likely, so I would not recommend that. Unless you live in Alaska or a very cold place or an area that doesn't get too hot. But if you have the four major seasons like we do, I highly recommend not storing in your garage. You really want to keep your food storage below 65 degrees. You know, depending on where you're storing it in your home, uh, keep it cool and you can keep it dark. But if you have light coming in, that's fine. Things like your oils and things should be in a dark place. Dark and cool is better. Then you got to think of humidity. Humidity will definitely make your food spoil quickly. Avoid storing food near a dryer, the water heater, just anywhere where there's water. Rethink that. And then there's sunlight. Keep it somewhere where it could get dark. So with figuring out the right conditions for your food storage, you could store it in your basement, nice and cool, but watch out for dryer vents and furnaces outside. This includes totes, sheds, or anywhere else that isn't air conditioned. The constant temperature variations will kill your food shelf life. The attic. Also a bad place unless it's well insulated and the temperature is consistent. And honestly, it's pretty inconvenient. There are some big mistakes that we can make in this whole process. One, buying food and forgetting about it. Just because you bought a bunch of food, shoved it in a closet, under the bed, doesn't mean that you're prepared. Buying huge quantities of food you've never even tried. I talk about this a lot, especially if you're a couponer or see a sale on something and you just start buying a ton of it. If your family really doesn't eat it, you shouldn't be stocking up on it. It will sit on your shelf. Here's an example. We tested out buying some canned potatoes. We're not big fans. So this is part of the bunch that I bought a couple of years ago. We're still going through these. I'm not wasting these. So we throw them into soups and stews. They're not our favorite. So this is something I'm not going to be constantly buying or having on our shelves. It's just not. We tested it out. We're not big fans of it. So nothing goes to waste. So we have been putting this in our soups and stews. So that goes to buying bulk items just because they're a good deal. It's not a good deal if it's food you don't like. So don't get sucked into buying food just because it's on sale. Not having an inventory list. You gotta know what you have. Yes, you could see it, but it's good to have it listed so that way when you're planning ahead for the next month or two for meals, you know if you have enough to make those meals that many times. How do you know if your canned goods have spoiled? Canned goods can spoil to many factors. Dents. So maybe if you've dropped a can, we've all dropped some before, and I'll dent right here. I keep an eye on it, but I still keep it. But if you dent too close to the rim, it's a goner. Get rid of it. Bulging. This is a bulging can. This is a no-no. Press on the lid of your can. Do you sense any pressure or swelling? Or does the top pop and move up and down? These are signs of botulism poisoning and we don't want to mess with that. This is going straight to the garbage. Glad I caught that. Hissing. Yes hissing. It's a sign of toxic gas from bacteria. So I experienced this when I packed up our food on the move. I was in the other food storage room and I'm hearing this like hissing. And I'm like, what is that? So I'm like listening around. There was a can of carrots actually that was hissing. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is happening? So I picked it up, threw it away. I wasn't even going to mess with that. So if you hear hissing, find the source get rid of it. You're going to look for corrosion. Check out all your cans. In this box here, there is a can that is not doing well. So always check your canned goods for dents. Make sure the lids are sealed good. No dents near them. That way you get the best storage life. But that is scary. Store your cans off the ground. Leaving your food on the ground exposes them to condensation floods, and temperature changes. Shelves are your friend. We actually got these at Home Depot. They're really easy to adjust and, and change around. Either way you go up or down, you can adjust the levels of your shelves. And it's really easy to get out. We use a rubber mallet and just pop them up out of the little spots here. You bang on them and they, they come out. They, it's so easy. Gosh, we've gone through, this is our third, food, fourth food storage room. Um, taking these up and down. We've had them for years and we found them at Home Depot and they work great. 
but I've seen shelving at so many places. I've seen shelving at Costco recently, Sam's Club. Follow me on Instagram. I'll let you know when I'm seeing some good deals at the stores that are pretty common here in America. In the comments, no matter when you're watching this video, leave down below what you're finding and what area you're in. So this will help everybody out. Down at the bottom here, I store food in food grade buckets. So this is where I keep all our pastas. And then for right now, I have a lot of our bulk storage, extra kitchen items in these crates for right now. But that's how I'm utilizing between the shelf and the floor. Well, it is done. Like I said, it took a day. Things could switch up, just depending, but it's done, thank gosh. Now it makes meal planning and cooking a lot easier. If you wanna go further into how to build a two week, one month, three to six month rotating pantry, click on these videos I have for you. There's so much information in them. They're jam packed. You could do this on any budget, with any space. Uh, I hope this motivated you. I'll leave your tips and tricks down below and check out, again, these videos I have for you. I'll meet you over there. Thanks for joining me today. Bye.